Welcome back to the channel. So we are working on our trending post report widgets and uh, this is going to be the second part that we'll be working on. Now we want to query for the most commented on post and by default WordPress actually makes this very easy for us in our database. So I'm going to go to my local PHP, my admin and I'm going to show you a couple of things that actually uh, existed there that uh, maybe we've never really given thought to. So when we open our PHP my admin, we actually see our our databases. So in this particular case, my database for this site is actually uh, called CC. Now in CC we have all these different tables and you can see some are for WooCommerce and others are just for default WordPress uh, tables and they're about 12 in number. So we'll look at the WP underscore post. Now, of course, it has a prefix of WP underscore. You'll see all through the tables, and that comes from our particular file in our WordPress. Uh, that uh, as we are installing, you remember we are requested for a table prefix. Now, when we're going the WP post, for example, here in the table, we're able to see the different uh, rows of information that are available. For example, here we have a post with an post author who is author one, who has an ID of one, it was posted on this date, uh, it has this content, this is the title, it has no except, it has a post status of publish, uh, it has comments that are open, uh, allowing us to comment on it. However, even with all this information coming in uh, at the very end of our table, we actually see that, of course, it has a link to that point, but we'll see that it has a comment count. Now, this comment count is related to, of course, the comment status, which is open, allowing us to, to see, to add more comments to the post. But this comment count here, we can actually use it uh, as you can see, all the others are zero, others are three. Uh, we can use this to actually throw and show the most commented on uh, post. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of SQL. And actually WordPress does this for us very, very well. So we'll come back to our code here and we're going to create a new function, which we shall call uh, get most commented posts. I'll call it get db most commented posts and right here we shall just uh, add our curly brackets so that we can start adding. Now WordPress of course comes with a global that is called a wpdb which is for WordPress database in there. Now this particular global if we var dump you if we var dump what it has on it you'll actually see a couple of functions that are added onto it. I'll echo this with uh, the pre-tags so that we can format this and then I'll duplicate this, bring it here and close off the pre-tag so that we can see it a little bit better. Now I just need to call this uh, function here but what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new widget here that we shall call a uh, trending posts comment widget. And that is the one that we're going to use to show our comments and we shall so we shall just use uh, this same function we have here and we shall drop it in here. However, because we have introduced the aspect of namespaces, I'll just copy this and add it to this point in this function and also this function so that we don't have our plugin breaking. So what I'll do is I'll come back to the dashboard of my website and I'm going to go and we shall see that in our trending posts uh, we expected to have one parameter. This is trending post and we should be having another widget here. So I'll just uh, make some amends here and call this uh, most commented. I think I had deleted my function, I'll just put it back here that I had deleted and then when we, that is for this function, now it's available for working, it's the one that was bringing us our training posts. Now when we look at the get db most commented posts, 
now we are able to see it in our dashboard and here of course we have our training post showing up now in this uh, WPDB we actually see that we have an object and if we scroll down we see the information that is actually available for us to use now of course we have WP options uh, coming in there but we have a function that we can append to our WPDB and now this function is actually what we call the get results. Now of course get results expects some information coming to it. Now inside this get results is actually where we're going to add our SQL. Of course our get results expects the SQL commands to come in. So first of all we wrap them with our double quotations and we'll say we are going to look for the ID, the post title and the comment count and we're going to select this information and this information of course will be selected from a table. So we add the from table and that table is going to be called the WP posts which we already saw in our database. Now the challenge comes with uh, the prefixes, you're not always sure that the prefix will be WP uh, in any case or in any database. So we need to make this a little dynamic and we use our curly brackets here. So what we do is we access the WPDT, uh, WPDB um, variable and then we append to it and say we want to get the prefix of this. This will allow us to get the prefix that was stored in the WordPress on installation. Next of course we have to say we are going to get the posts that we actually do want to get are where the post type is actually post uh, because we are looking for the most commented posts and we want to be published so we don't want drafts or any other post status so that's why we have the post status of publish and we want where the comment count is actually greater than zero. Now the reason why we wrap our zero into strings here is because the database stores that information as a string. Uh, when you look at uh, the database here and you go to the very end, this information of comment count is actually a string and I'll show you, I'll verdump that for you to see that we actually get a string back. Now we echo and we say we want to get one where it's greater than zero. What we shall do next is actually we need to order, uh, we need to order those comments already. We want our query to come ready to give us that information so that we don't do any extra coding to order this. So we'll just say order that information by the comment count and make it from uh, the highest going all the way to the lowest. And then for now we shall limit, we don't want our whole database to come back. We shall limit this and say we want 10 posts let's say for now. So what I'm going to do is actually I am going to wrap this into, into a variable so that at the end of the day we can always uh, add an option to either make this more or less depending on the user that we do have. And what we shall do in this case is that we shall take away this 10 and then close off, close off our SQL and then we are going to add the PHP and call this limit. Now just below the global I am going to add a variable called limit and it will equal to 10 which is a number. After adding our limit let's go and see what is actually returned on our front end. So in our dashboard we'll actually see that this returns an array of zero which shouldn't be the case. Let's go back because we have a a post here that has a limit of two. So let's see where we errored in our code. I see I have no spaces here. Let me just make sure I have the right spaces in my query. So I'll space that. Actually it's now starting to change color for my coding. Make sure I have the spaces in between my SQL link and we have the space on the limit that is working out well. Uh, this space doesn't matter for the PHP but I'll just wrap this then remove that space, save 
uh, come back to our front end reload and now we have a proper object that has our information so remember i told you the comment count will actually come back as a string and it has a value of two so we have a post called hello world and it's actually our most commented post at this time so what we are going to do is that we're going to save uh, this particular information we're getting here in what in a variable called a commented posts and we'll equal to that and what we're going to do is to, uh, just I'll just clean this out and what we're going to do now is that we're going to loop through the array of information using a for each statement and we shall say for each as commented post as a post we're going to <coughs> uh, virtually just come back here and then copy this code that we have here so that we can use the same styling and have a similar table of information so what we're going to do here is we'll have a post title and the number of comments so number of comments is there now in here what we are looping is remember we had our post title and comment title so what we're going to do here is come back in here we're going to just bring uh, the the post because we are looping post we shall add the post title which is being returned in our object and then write down here and then we shall append the comment count and save this so i have an error here because i have an extra an extra bracket that was coming from the var dump so i'll just tidy this up a little bit so i need to remove this remove the while loop uh, tidy this up bring this a little back save this come back reload unexpected oh of course now we no longer need that bracket and then come back and reload here and we'll see that we have our hello world and we have our number of posts which are two so that's how we get back our commented posts and I'm going to wrap this up by just styling up our, our project that we do have right now now of course everything is namespaced it's clean uh, we can move this to another uh, let's say if, uh, uh, file if we wanted to just to keep this a little bit clean um, but what I'm going to do now is actually I'm just going to now add some style to our plugin now to add our style in our plugin I'm going to come here and then comment this and say style add styles add styles and we'll use the default uh, WordPress way of adding style so in order to just add only to the admin and not send this to the front end we're going to use the admin print styles hook in our wordpress and what we shall do is we shall use an anonymous function in this case and then we shall use a wp and q style and we shall prefix this with a tpw styles scripts and styles and we shall use the function that is a plugins url here and that accepts only two arguments so it accepts the name of the file which will be css a folder called css and a style sheet called uh, style.css and of course we'll add the global file so that we're able to track this back uh, just from this file so in here i need to create a new folder which i'll call css and in that folder i'll create a file called styles dot css now the first thing we shall do is we shall add a table but i'm going to i'm going to make this a little bit more restricted only to this uh, widget for example and what i'm going to do is that to the different tables i'm actually going to add a class and so to this table i'll look for table again table table i'm just going to add a class 
the class will be TPW tables. So I'll just copy this, come back to our style, and then put the drop TPW tables. Of course, that will be the table. And what I'm going to do is I'm giving it a width of a hundred percent. Uh, the next thing that I will do is that I will need to add a table head with a background. So table head, give it a background. And then in the background what I'm going to do is uh, add a pound sign, go for FFEE. -E. Uh, I'll just use that for now and save that. So if I come back here and reload, we'll actually see nothing happen. Ah, because I called my file styles here, this should also be style. So I'll save this, come back, reload, and we'll see that our table actually has a pinkish color <laughs> right there. Um, might not be what we are looking for. So let's go for a 333, three, three, which is black. And then I'll give this a color of a white which is FFF, so save this, come back and reload. We have our titles there, I'm just going to make sure everything is right aligned, left aligned, sorry. So save that, left aligned. Uh, of course, it will need some padding and then we'll make a this uh, the different table rows, the TDs that come second to just have the content right in the middle. So so we'll have alternating we'll have alternating table rows and we shall add the nth child and say for every second uh, table row, what we're going to do is that we are going to give it a lighter shade of black, which is that CC will have the text in black, so black, and it will still be left aligned, just copy this, and then I'll add this for navy table row, the second table data, what we need to do is just add a, a text align of center. And so I'll save this table head here, th, save, I uh, need to add a comma to just make this. So to every second table head that we do have, we'll want our information actually being in the center. So reload, we have that coming out very well. If the posts are going to be longer than this, then we'll need to shift this, but automatically the table will readjust to have that. But visually, let's just uh, make that table head uh, a little restricted. So. I'll add this here and give it a width of uh, just 30% of the table. So come back here, reload, and voila, looks a little better, looks a little nicer. So the only thing that we'll be missing is adding some padding into the table bodies. So dump this here, move it down, uh, do table data, and then add a padding of about t 10 pixels, no, 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 we'll do 5 pixels top down and then 7 pixels uh, left right. Uh, of course, I'll just duplicate this to add the table head here, add a comma, and then uh, of course reload, and I think we are almost there if we did did this right because we restricted the the height of this so we'll make this 35 percent so reload and that looks a little bit better uh, we could always reduce the size of the table data that comes in uh, outside the table head and make it a little smaller but I think overall this looks uh, worthwhile and it's working as we had planned out to be. So thank you for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and click the notification bell 
if you want to be informed about videos that will be coming up next. So thank you for watching and happy coding!